Thank you, Mr Deputy President. I was pleased to be involved in a recent inquiry into road tolling in New South Wales. I was not a member for the full length of the committee, as I was not a member of this Legislative Council at its inception. But I'm still glad, I'm still glad that I got to be a part of the committee at its conclusion. I'm especially glad, Mr Deputy President, because it gives me yet another opportunity to stand up here and talk, talk about North Connects. I've spoken in this place many times before about the more than 34,000 people from the Central Coast alone who leave each day to travel to and from Sydney or Newcastle for work, um, Mr Deputy President, of which I used to be one. Um, for many of these people, North Connects is a game changer. Too many people from the Central Coast and the Hunter know the problem of Pennant Hills Road. In peak hour on a good day, it can take more than half an hour to drive the eight kilometres from the end of the F3 or the, M or the M2 or vice versa. On a bad day, say the Friday before a long weekend, it can be well over an hour. North Connects is going to be an incredible time saver for the tradies who make the trek to and from Sydney at 6 a.m. each day in their utes with their tools in the back. This is lost, however, Mr Deputy President, on the champagne socialists who are anti-road and expect a carpenter to carry his circular saw from job to job on a bus. North Connects is going to have a similar transformative effect that the Hawkesbury River Rail Bridge had when it opened in 1889. When that bridge opened, it was the final missing link in the railway between the, between the Central Coast and Newcastle and Sydney. It was in fact the last link between Melbourne and Brisbane. North Connects is the last link allowing for traffic light free travel from Newcastle to Melbourne. North Connects is a road that has been imagined in various different versions since 1929. There was even land reserved to build it before that was sold in 1996. Mr Deputy President, I've gone back through and had a look at the Hansard. When the land was sold off and the then Car Government Roads Minister, the Honourable Michael Knight, in that year was asked, what are the government's intentions for the road corridor proposed as the future link between the M2 motorway and the Sydney to Newcastle freeway? known at the time, Mr Deputy President, as the F3. Here are some highlights from his response. I am pleased to advise the House that the government will abandon the road corridor. He continued, building this road was never on the government's agenda. He was right. The Labor Party had no intention of building the link that would be of such a benefit to the people of the Central Coast. But the coalition is, Mr Deputy President, and is now well over halfway through construction. I had the pleasure to visit North Connects in December and see the first tunnel breakthrough linking up the two sections of the tunnel being constructed. It will be opened initially with two lanes in each direction, in each direction but is being built wide enough for three lanes in each direction to cater for motorists in the future. It is also being built taller than other tunnels in New South Wales, which means that larger trucks will be taken off local roads. It is also being built on lower gradients than other tunnels in New South Wales, meaning that cars won't require as much energy to drive in or out of them, meaning less pollution. In 2012, the Coalition Government implemented its unsolicited proposals policy. It was this policy that allowed the North Connects proposal to be proposed that very same year. The inquiry found that North Connects as a project as it exists today originated from an unsolicited bid put forward by Transurban and Westlick M7 shareholders in 2012. The final project was developed under the New South Wales Government Unsolicited Proposal Guide and the final contract was agreed in 2015. The inquiry heard that tolls on North Connects will represent about one third of the value of the project, which leaves a deficit of two thirds. Part of that shortfall to be made up through state and federal contributions of around $405 million each, as well as a concession to, toll, to the toll on the M7. I want to talk about these concessions, because these are concessions that are an important way to fund motorways in, New South, in, in Sydney, in a way that ensures it remains affordable for motorists throughout the city. For example, the Cross City Tunnel, which was approved by a Labor government, has a toll that is $5.67, or $2.70 per kilometre. If this same cost were to be applied to North Connects, the toll would be $24.30. Using concessions like these to build and improve motorways in New South Wales is nothing new. They have been used to fund improvements to many roads before, particularly the M5 upgrades. The alternative is no new motorways. In a dissenting statement, Dr Faruqi stated, the committee heard evidence that the dominant position of Transurban may lead to an unfair advantage in negotiating power. I'd like to dwell on that for just a moment. 
The inquiry heard from Mr Tony Harris, a former New South Wales Auditor General, who stated, when Transfield was negotiating its multi-deals in New South Wales, it was a superb negotiator. That is its job. That is its life. It lives and dies by its ability to write good contracts. He continued, these people are very, very skilled in ways that the public service is just not skilled. However, Dr Faruqi would have, and I quote, that the New South Wales government leverage its capacity to finance infrastructure itself to retain it in public ownership, according to Dr Faruqi's dissenting statement. I have to say that I love it when the Greens are given the advice that the public service are not best placed to negotiate a contract, but they believe the public service should be the ones taking on the much more difficult and an, an enormous job of building the tunnel itself and delivering such a monumental piece of infrastructure. Mr Deputy President, we need to go back to 2011, when those opposite were booted from government. There was not one motorway under construction in Sydney. Not one. Zilch. Zero. Nada. Why was this? Well, the former Liberal Premier of New South Wales, Nick Greiner, is fond of saying that there are only two ways of paying for new roads. New roads can be funded using taxes that could otherwise be spent on schools or hospitals. Or they can be funded using tolls or a mixture of the two, rather. Um, however, there is no third way. There is no magic pudding. The funds must have a source. Taxes or tolls. There is just no third option. Was the reason that there were no new motorways under construction in 2011 because they had removed the toll from the M4 in the months leading up to the election? In the cynical hope of saving some Western Sydney seats instead of putting it to use in the construction of an M4 East, which the Labor Party had promised to build on multiple occasions? Or was it because building a substandard M5 East and not charging a toll because it had raided the state of any funds to build more infrastructure for the families and communities of the future. It is a wonderful contrast that we now have. Construction on the North Connects, the new M5 and M4 East is well advanced. We're in the late stages of planning the M4, M5 link and the new M12 to West, the Western Sydney Airport and also have in the pipeline the Beaches link and stage one of the F6 extension. I also want to point out that this is in addition to the huge investment in public transport projects, including the Sydney Metro Northwest, as well as the Sydney and Newcastle light rail projects that are, un that are under construction. It is also in addition to the 500 brand new train carriages for the intercity rail commuters that are going to start rolling out first for the Central Coast and, Cust and Newcastle customers next year. The inquiry also investigated which motorways are subject to non-competition clauses. A non-competition clause is a clause that specifically excludes the government from improving public transport in areas around privately owned motorways. I'm happy to say that the inquiry found that none of the motorways that have begun construction during this government, including North Connects, are subject to non-competition clauses. None of them. In fact, this government even managed to get a non-competition clause removed from the M2 contract so that we could build the Sydney Metro North West. There is just one motorway that includes a non-compete clause in it to actively prevent public transport proposals, and that is the Eastern Distributor. Guess who snuck that clause into contract when they built the motorway? The Labor Party. I am proud to be a part of a government that is spending a record amount on infrastructure, a total of $80 billion over the next four years. I am particularly excited for North Connects and the benefits that will flow from it opening next year to commuters and businesses on the Central Coast and in the Hunter. I am very proud to be a government that is de delivering motorways and delivering budget surpluses as well. It is in stark contrast to those opposite whose record in office was more failed plans and budget deficits. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. Yes, um